Hello. Welcome to Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. My name is Chan Spingen, and I'm a technical marketing engineer for virtualization at NetApp. Today, I'm walking around Lake Betts, what we affectionately refer to as Lake NetApp. Behind me, you can actually see some of the buildings on the NetApp campus. Today, I wanted to introduce you to a series of videos I'm doing about using VMware Tanzu, VMware Cloud Foundation, and other virtualization technologies together with the NetApp data management portfolio. And I stress together because they really do complement each other. In this first episode in the series, I'll be kicking it off with the Tanzu Basic Solution. And we'll only be using Tanzu Kubernetes Grid Service, or TKGS for short, with standard vSphere distributed switches instead of NSXT, which would let you deploy and manage vSphere pods. More on that in the next episode. Tanzu Basic is the entry point into VMware's Tanzu universe. Using only vSphere 7 and really nothing else, it is the most affordable and accessible edition of Tanzu for doing modern development of applications as containerized microservices on a VMware integrated Kubernetes environment. Microservices, containers, and Kubernetes help to free apps from infrastructure, enabling them to work independently and run anywhere. With VMware Tanzu, you can make the most of these cloud native patterns, automate the delivery of containerized workloads, and proactively manage apps in production. Using NetApp technologies like VVols, for example, with Tanzu allows you to leverage on TAP's advanced data management capabilities through seamless integration with the vSphere and Kubernetes frameworks. This enables simple storage management and provisioning using NetApp's best of breed capabilities like encryption, uh, compression, deduplication, even fabric pool tiering to an S3 bucket, either on-prem with something like Storage Grid or in the cloud with your preferred hyperscaler. You get to choose your type of physical storage and leverage VM granular, or in this case, container granular quality of service to deliver truly optimized storage service to your developers. It eliminates problems like noisy neighbors with guaranteed service levels or whatever classes of service that you decide to offer. In part one, I'm going to introduce you to my lab demo setup, explain storage classes in context, and discuss the storage management architecture of vSphere 7's TKG guest clusters. Okay, let's take a look. You can see here we're using vSphere 7 update one with vCenter managing a four node ESXi cluster. Now I've mentioned we're using regular distributed switches instead of NSXT. So to make that work, I've deployed an HA proxy, which you can see down here. The HA proxy is needed to provide the load balancing functionality for your supervisor control plane VMs which are deployed when you configure workload management for a vSphere cluster. Speaking of configuring workload management, in the interest of time, I've already completed that task, uh, as well as configuring the first namespace. But if you'd like to deploy your own lab, I'd recommend following the steps in Cormac Hogan's blog, which you can access via this QR code. Okay, let's take a quick look at the namespace and supervisor control plane cluster configuration. Here, under the Configure tab, select Namespaces and General in the Navigation panel. We can see our three Supervisor Control Plane VMs. We can see the VM size that was selected and the content library the images were deployed from. The content library storage is also shown here. Next, let's jump down to storage. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that vSphere 7 Update 1 requires thick VMDKs for the supervisors which I don't want to do on VVOLs with AFF. So what I've done is created a VMFS data store to keep all of my supervisor VMs in. Uh, because the NetApp VOS provider supports storage policy-based management for any ONTAP storage, not just VVOLs, I'm able to leverage those technologies here for my supervisor nodes, regardless of how the data is actually stored and accessed. Keep in mind, uh, this issue is actually resolved with TKG in VC your 6.7 patch 4 and later, and I expect it to be resolved very quickly in the 7.0 code line as well. Now, let's take a look at policies and profiles and select VM storage policies. Next, let's select the policy that we used for the supervisor control plane VMs, and you can see VASA rules that I'm using, the storage capability profile, which we'll talk more about in the next video, and a tag which I've created for reporting and secure multi-tenancy purposes. Let's quickly step through and see the VM compliance status and list of compatible data stores. 
Okay, back to hosts and clusters now. Here you can see that I've created a TKG cluster under the first namespace, which itself has three VMs. And this can really adapt to your needs. Uh, the TKG cluster can be larger, but this is kind of the basic starter deployment. The way this works is there's Kubernetes running in the supervisor control plane and in the TKG clusters. So it's basically managing Kubernetes with Kubernetes. This is actually a pretty common way to do things. Backing up a level in the tree, we have the namespace. The namespace is a way to securely segment your environment for different customers, user groups, dev teams, whatever you need. Here on the summary tab, you assign them permissions and select VM storage policies that can be used for dynamically provisioning persistent volume claims within the namespace. Now, this is not subject to the thick requirement of the supervisor control plane that I mentioned earlier. So you can really use any policy you want here. In, in this case, I'm using one called AFF default VMS, VMSP. If we go back to VM storage policies, we can see the rules with the AFF default SCP and tag selected TKG cluster nodes that are in compliance and compatible storage is listed as VVOL's iSCSI. Now, what's special about this is that VM storage policies are assigned to the namespace and they get translated into Kubernetes storage classes automatically and natively by the vCenter server's Cloud Native Storage Components or CNS for short. Let's jump over to this tab where I've got the vSphere 7 docs open and break away from the demo lab for a minute so we can talk about the connection between Kubernetes and vSphere. Within vCenter itself, the CNS or Cloud Native Storage Management Plane works with the vSphere CNS CSI or Container Storage Interface driver in the supervisor cluster. And the PV CSI driver or para virtual CSI driver in the TKG guest clusters to handle the integration from VM storage policy to Kubernetes storage class. Now to facilitate container granular storage management, VMware introduced a new way to consume storage called first class disks or FCDs for short. Normally a traditional VMDK or VVOL is associated with and essentially owned by a VM. FCDs disassociate the storage from the VM and instead are managed by vCenter independently of tra traditional VM ownership and are exposed through the control plane as block devices for Kubernetes. Now, unfortunately, as of vSphere 7 update 1, these FCDs are always going to be presented as read write once. So if you need read write many or um, CSI snapshots or any feature is not currently supported by the vSphere CSI, then you'll need to look at something like NetApp Trident, for example, a CSI provisioner, which supports those features as well as quite a few more that lets you manage volumes from systems running any combination of NetApp's ONTAP element and centricity data management platforms, plus um, Azure NetApp files uh, in Azure, Cloud Volume Service for AWS and Cloud Volume Service for GCP. But because third-party CSI drivers aren't currently supported with TKG guest clusters or the supervisor cluster, you'll need to look at either designing your apps differently or deploying a different Kubernetes solution in your guest clusters, such as Tanzu Kubernetes Grid 1.2, for example, um, or many others. Jumping back into the lab, let's go to the command line and see what this looks like in practice. Here, I've set up an alias for kubectl, so I just type k. It's a pretty common trick to save yourself some typing, and since this is Windows, I did it with DOS key. I've already logged into the correct context, so we don't have to do that. Uh, now we're just going to run k get sc, and now we can see the VM storage policy is available as a storage class from the vSphere CSI provisioner. Okay, that wraps up this segment. Uh, in the next episode, we'll cover configuring the VASA provider. Um, creating storage with policies, profiles, and tags, and then consuming it through Kubernetes using YAML to create persistent volume claims, pods, and services. See you next time.